Mm. For me, uh, it was in the local dialect. So mm. someone saying like, uh, the the paper and get a it was they translated like, uh, no one can pass my exam. Oh, so yeah. uh, why why are you setting a paper that kids cannot pass? And mm. Uh, mm. I think I've had a very strong discussion with uh, my brother who went through like uh, uh, a certain social social service school or something like that. Mm, mm. He tells me of a certain lecturer that used to tell them that uh, in his particular paper you cannot, no student can score an A, mm, cannot score a B. Mm, mm. Well, what's that? Can yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the idea that uh, lecturers pass set exams mm. for, for kids to fail, mm. to disapprove kids, mm. but also that kids sit exams simply to pass and get a paper, I mm. think it's quite appalling. Right. Uh, we need to revisit the real intentions of uh, education when Sir Francis Bacon and the like and his colleagues were popularizing or reinventing or re-innovating the mm. scientific method. Mm. It was more about uh, the quality things, right. research driven science, right. the quality of education, mm. attention to details, right. than uh, simply mere accomplishments. Mm. So which our system has been zeroed down to, it's all about working through class, right. working through school, right. uh, sitting up a, a few tests here and there. Mm. I have had a similar story from my friend uh, mm. who is a physicist uh, and he lectures at uh, the Southern University of Texas. Mm. He told me like, uh, when he was studying, uh, he did particular tests, mm. and I think he got a perfect score mm. in most of the tests that were given. Mm. And uh, he wakes up this particular day, he goes to sit the final exam, and uh, his lecture is like, uh, uh, local man, you, you, don't, you don't have to sit a final. You understand? <laughs> the lecturer is proved beyond reasonable doubt mm. that actually uh, this kid mm. Uh, knows what he's doing, you understand? Mm, so mm. further examination is not necessary, is, is not necessary. Mm. but here uh, people, kids cheat in I exams. Know. I know. In, in fact, uh, when I was at campus, a friend of mine uh, approached me uh, diligently mm. and he told me, you know what, if you ever get an opportunity to cheat, please <laughs> do so. <laughs> I wasn't alone, I know. in our group. Mm. <laughs> If you ever get an opportunity to cheat, oh please mm. do so. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, and again, this is a wider discussion mm. about what society has become. Yeah. And uh, what dimension are we basing on to uphold right. morals or right. values right. in society? Mm. So, I gave an analysis there, Tom, like uh, from academia and author who started that in the 1950s. Kids lost their innocence when they were from their parents by well paying jobs, cars, and relics and music. Mm. And that gave rise to a new term, uh, gap in the generation. Mm. So kids were very distant mm. from uh, the generation of their parents right. by mm. the, f the things that were happening in their lives at the time. Mm. In the 1960s, kids lost all their, their authority because mm. they could have protest. Mm. Church, state, and parent were all called into question mm. and found wanting. Mm. Their authority was rejected mm. and nothing ever replaced it. Mm. In the 1970s, kids lost their love. It was mm. a decade of me-ism yeah. filled with hyphenated words mm. at the beginning with self. Mm. Self-image, self-esteem, self-assertion. Mm. It's meant for a very lonely world. Yeah. Kids learned everything they were to do about sex, forgot everything they were to do about love, mm. and very few in that generation had enough to tell them that there was indeed a difference. Yeah. Because they had a very high self-esteem, mm. and yet their self was empty. True. In the 1980s, kids lost their hope. Mm. Stripped of innocence in the 50s, authority in the 60s, and love in the 70s, mm. many of them stopped believing in the future. Yeah. In the 1990s, kids lost their power to reason. Mm. Less and less of them were taught the objects of truth and logic, and they grew up with the irrationality of the postmodern world. Yeah. In the new millennia, kids woke up and realized that amidst all this change, they had lost their imagination. Yeah. Violence and perversion entertained them until no one could talk about the killing of innocence. Mm. Why? Because none was innocent. Absolutely. Now, that is how the generation has evolved. Right. And you could think that by analyzing, the evolution of a generation and where we stand, mm. uh, things are magically going to get better. Mm. But uh, the question is, mm. uh, when you have two questions around there, one, mm. uh, are the kids aware that something is wrong in their generation? Mm. Mm. That's a question. Yeah. Then two, what becomes 
the standard, the value system we appeal to mm. in a world where doing otherwise rewards efficiently. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, excellent question. It was uh, it was uh, uh, Stefan Verstappen mm. who started. He wrote a book called uh, Defense Against the Psychopath. Mm. And he writes, uh, stating that uh, the psychopath is more likely going to find them mm. in the boardroom than on the long side of the track. Mm. Because in environments where there is a very high competition, mm. when the competition is too tight, mm. the ruthlessness mm. with which people apply the cheating strategy mm. becomes more evident. Mm. So, in such ecosystems and environments, mm. literally the lack of pity and empathy literally becomes a prerequisite mm. to survival. Right. So, in such environments where people can mimic mm. secondary characteristics of psychopathy, mm. malevolence, mm. and all those of and narcissism, mm. you are left to wonder mm. who is now going to be the flag bearer mm. that is going to point the world in the right direction. Right. When the people that you could look up to that have made it in society are doing otherwise. Mm. They have experimented right. that evil rewards. I know. So what are they going to, to tell you? Mm. So then you understand that this world, it is not only that kids are not aware mm. that uh, they are doing something wrong, mm. but also they lack genuine leaders and inspiration that mm. are going to point them to the right direction. True. We need leaders mm. that can articulate a vision mm. of uh, a world mm. in which we would better live, yeah. a world in which people can thrive. Right. So if uh, the principle of uh, the golden rule, mm. whereby like I treat you better, Treat me better, mm. understand, mm. Uh, and uh, uh, that is a vertical, sorry, the horizontal dimension of mm. human relationships. Mm. We have three literal relationships in action. Mm. I believe you have a vertical relationship mm. with a transcendent being, mm. a horizontal relationship with each other, mm. and the diagonal relationship with nature. Mm. So, uh, if you have to look at the horizontal relationship, mm. what happens to you mm. in a world mm. where there is nothing to mimic? from mm. the people around you, you feel mm. that their moral structure is beyond redemption. Oh dear. It simply means that you need to rely on a higher truth, I know. a vertical dimension yeah. that defines mm. uh, the, the moral structure. Right. It's, it's more like uh, in the Bible, mm. where God would appoint a king and mm. trust him, let's say, like, uh, with uh, keeping the people in mm. a certain moral structure. Mm. So the king fails to fulfill, mm. and uh, God now sends uh, prophets mm. to keep reminding people that you've weathered off the path. Yeah. So the question would be, okay, how do we know that mm. they are false prophets or right. true prophets? Right. And of course, uh, you, you can see the fruit. Absolutely, <laughs> you know them by the fruit. Yeah. So yes. it, it's it's a more complex structure. Right. You have the psychopath here. Mm. Then you have that person who is disappointed with the world. Yeah. Someone who has a very unique, a very disturbed view mm. of the world. Mm. He's literally a judge mm. whose human experiences have showed him that there is nothing beautiful about us. Mm. So if that person is either going to to uh, retreat mm. into uh, idea, uh, idealism, mm. uh, pleasurous idealism, right. or mindless uh, pleasurism, right. where they they hope that they're going to satisfy their minds yeah. themselves with quite yeah. a lot of pleasure, right. or they're going to retire to retreat into into uh, childlike ignorance mm. and act like uh, they know nothing mm. about life, or they're going to uh, get money, get some energy, mm. and fight back. Mm. So. Uh, that, that is actually a complexity, and I think I'm discussing this issue with uh, a little bit of an oversimplification. Mm. Because people who see no reason mm. for life, people who question being mm. itself, mm. let it be that they did not believe in God, mm. they will either question chance, mm. like what has probability done to me? Right. I'm always what has luck done to me? Mm. I have bad luck, can understand? Mm. So, everyone once in a while catches hell from. Mm things mm -hmm. in this world and people tend to believe that uh, 
uh, some people have actually arrived at the conclusion that all of us are destined for destruction. All of us mm. are going to die. Mm. So, uh, but but in a moment, as people go through these pains mm. and these ideals, mm. the question is, what kind of appeal do you give to such people mm. morally? Right. Do you have the authority to travel in our boy? I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's bad to cheat. But someone has feels like life has cheated them for a very long time. I know. So I think that uh, we need to address some of those questions. And uh, and I think to some extent, uh, I always tell people that uh, the working of God mm -hmm. or the, the force measure, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's why you, an act of God, that's yeah. what you guys call it, you yeah. know. An act of God, mm. uh, let's say like an earthquake, mm. does not necessarily mean that you're going to, you, it, 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 you, you, it's going to, it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's going to happen without your knowledge. Mm. So, okay, let me bring it like this. Uh, just because something is beyond your control mm. does not mean you cannot prepare because there is an, you see, you, you, you also see a necessity yeah. for preparation. Absolutely. So just because you know that all of us are going to die, yeah. some people say that death is the most democratic thing, right. thing in the world. True. Mm. It, it, it takes the rich, it takes mm. the poor, it, mm. it's, it's quite democratic. Mm. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's, it's doing your things. Mm. So some people think that, okay, uh, just because we are all going to die, so does it mean that uh, I shouldn't sleep under a mosquito net? Does mm. it mean I shouldn't take medicine? I know. So there are things that we, we, we need to do as part of our human responsibility. Absolutely. And as we, we, as we enlighten people mm. further, mm. deeply, about the questions of meaning, why are we here, mm. what's the purpose of life, yes. and the questions of identity, who am I, and with what kind of character, yeah. what kind of standard am I going to navigate through this world? Mm. As people become more enlightened about that, mm. then life is going to become a better place. What is going to become a better place? Absolutely. But I think, yes. These questions are highly personal. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and uh, like I said, there is an oversimplification mm. when we talk about them yeah. because uh, people are deeply facing trouble. People mm. are deeply passing through pain right. that uh, you just cannot explain away uh, psychologically, yeah. philosophically, mm. religiously. Yeah. People are having deeply troubling issues, mm. troubling memories, yeah. disastrous campaigns, mm. and uh, they just need some little bit of compassion, True. which is sometimes too much of an ambition. Ask. I know, I know, and there's a poem that reminds me actually in conclusion of that. It's a poem called My Soul Has a Heart yeah. by Andrew. I, you, you, I'm sure you know about that poem, but you see, the point that you're making is to become what they call a conscious objector. Here's a book called Conscious Objector. There's certain things I think we have to comprehend in our heart that, regardless of what happens, and luck what is luck? Luck is opportunity made in with preparation. Those are questions that demand answers, and I think sometimes, I think that Pascal, the philosopher, who said, it's uh, be careful with what you wish for, because life is like a mirage, it's a fantasy. It's not the it that you want, but it's a fantasy of it. That's why they say that the hunt is sweeter than the kill. So, but in life, what is life? It's these small moments of rationality, compassion, and even self-sacrifice, because in the end, what we do for another is what's gonna help, and that's what they call a uh, given paradox living by winning by losing when christ said turn the other tick he was mindful that it would be in suffering dr king used to say that he said you rather go through life with a, a, a scar on your body than a scar on your soul so let's be careful brethren and be blessed we'll come back with my brother and friend the incredible young man jonathan jonathan katende god bless you for now thank you